So winter's around the corner and I've got some great fragrances that are perfect to wear when it's cold outside. We've talking about oud, woody, oudy, savannah malic, oudy, woody fragrances contrasted with some sweet gourmand notes. I've got 12 fragrances here that fit this category and it's a ranked video for you today. So if you want to find out about delicious gourmand oud woody fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in, this is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about Gourmand Oud's delicious Oud fragrances. And again, Oud wood, woody Oud fragrances that are contrasted or, you know, blended with some Gourmand notes. Most of these will feature vanilla, but some of them will feature other notes as well, other Gourmand notes. And it's a ranked video for you today, and you'll find out what I'm, you know, I'm enjoying more than others, and so uh, it's a great list for you to find, especially if you like gourmand notes and also, you know, oud and uh, fragrances. Of course, oud wood and things like that. This will be a great reference video for you to come back to. Some of the fragrances have been around for a while. A couple of them are fairly new, and you know, I just did a video for Ludo the other day for Sarah Baker perfumes that is featured in this video. But before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. So as I said, Ludo is featured in this video. If you haven't caught that video, go catch it. There is a full bottle giveaway and two sample sets for Sarah Baker perfumes. Uh, worldwide. So go catch that and participate in that giveaway. But let's go ahead and get started with number 12. There's 12 of them here. And as I said, it's a rank video. And I've got a fragrance from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels, brand new. And it's, that's why it's ranked at number 12. And I'm kind of digging more and more into Van Cleef and Arpels fragrances, uh, their luxury collection. Very under-hyped not a lot of people talk about it, but there's some great fragrances here. And this is only ranked here at number 12 because it's brand new and I didn't know where to put it yet. But this is Oud Blanc, this one right here. This actually came out last year, but our Neemans just got it in uh, a couple months ago. Just brand new. So I think because of the pandemic, it didn't receive it last year. But it is here now. Sadly, they don't have orchid leather, which is featured in my video yesterday. But this is actually a combination of oud vanilla with roses. And it kind of kind of sort of reminds me of Lancome's oud bouquet. But it's a little different on its own. Uh, created by Anne Flippo of IFF. And she did uh, Frederick Mall's latest fragrance, uh, Synthetic Jungle. But as I said, it's kind of a contrast of syrupy vanilla with that kind of oody, woody note, along with the uh, white musk, rose, aldehydes, incense. It's not overly complex. It's also kind of a softer take on oud. It's not animalic or anything like that. Just one that features, you know, the oud de vanilla, the rose. That combination is great, you know? Kind of thinking like, Montal's Intense Cafe without the oud because uh, I like this like sweet uh, syrupy gourmand uh, take on rose but it's kind of featured here but of course that oud cuts through and kind of cuts through the sweetness of the vanilla but kind of you know delicious. Uh, I'm just ranking it at number 12 as I said uh, as it's fairly new but uh, I think it might, you know, move up the list later on um, in the in the future. But check this one out. It's it's brand new. Although, as I said, it's not new to us. I mean, it's not new to the world. It just came to Neiman Marcus this year, a couple months ago. Van Cleef and Arpels Oud Blanc at number twelve. Next up at number eleven, going to the house of Montal. We got little shaky little things here. Uh, Montal's Honey Oud at number 11. So this is here because, again, even with number 12, I don't find it an ultra gourmand, but I find it delicious. And here with this one as well, I know this one a little more than, a lot more than the Van Cleef and Arpels Oud Blanc, and I've had it for a while. And I like this one, but I wanted a little more gourmand. I wanted a little more sweet uh, vanilla kind of honey touch. It is after all called Honey Oud and it features honey, oud, cinnamon, amber, vanilla, leather, patchouli, floral notes. And again, you have all these kind of gourmandish notes, ambery notes, vanillic notes and things like that. But the oud is so overpowering. I get a lot more 
oud in this one in comparison to the kind of sweet vanillic gourmand notes. So this is for someone that likes a lot of oud, wants to kind of dabble into a little bit of sweet gourmand notes, but don't want don't don't want to be overwhelmed with all those gourmand notes. It's probably something like that, but you know it's it's decent. It's great. Uh, I actually f you know have had it for a while. I like it. I wish it was a little more honeyed, a little more vanillic, but it's not. So that's why it's at number eleven. Honey oud. Check that out. And let me know if you're a fan of that one. I do have Floris's honey oud on the list as well, but we're moving right along to number ten, and this time it's Lancôme's oud Bou bouquet. Uh, the fragrance that's kind of sort of similar to Oud Blanc from Van Cleef and Arpels. And this one to me acts a little more gourmand, but still it's a combination of the Oud and Rose together with the vanillic touches. But this features Oud, Rose, Pralines, Vanilla, Gayak Wood, Kopahu Balm. So I've heard that this particular version in this bottle is not as good as the previous bottle. Is that correct? I only sampled that previous bottle years and years and years ago, never bought it. I could have sworn it was really, really great. How great is this compared to that? Or how great is the other compared to this? But I still like this one, you know? I like it. It's kind of like that oud rose combo with kind of like the vanilla gourmandy notes together. It makes sense. It works. It's delicious. It's perfect for, you know, warm, uh, I mean, not warm days, but cold days, cool days. And it's a perfect example of warm, spicy, uh, gourmandish notes along with that oudy woody note. So Lancôme's Oud Bouquet at number 10. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. Also, let me know if you appreciate, you know, ouds with gourmand notes. I think it's a great contrast. It works. Although I think my favorite combo with ouds is rose, just rose on its own. But I think there are a lot of great fragrances that are kind of gourmandish that work. And speaking of the florist at number nine, it's Floris's Honey Oud. Now this, in comparison to this, is definitely a lot more honey. Uh, but it doesn't really act too much like a gourmand fragrance to me. So that's why it's here. Because it's mostly about the honey and there's rose here as well. And the oud, I think it's the oud, rose and honey. And I don't get a lot of rose, but it's hinting in the background. But what I wanted also with this one is a little more ambery vanillic touches. And something else, like caramel perhaps, to act a little bit more like you know, an actual gourmand. It's not there. And that's why it's here. But I do really enjoy this particular fragrance for what it is. I wouldn't call this an overly gourmand experience. That's why it's ranked here. But this is a really, really delicious for the honey with the oud and the rose. But in the background, you've got like the ambery vanillic touches uh, in there. You know, you've got some patchouli. There's some, you know, light citrusy touches and it's uh, definitely quite musky. Floris is a brand I'm not I haven't spoken too much about, but I think this is definitely one of my favorite fragrances. I do need a new bottle. As you can see, I've used up quite a bit, but I've had this for quite a long time. It's it's definitely yummy. Uh, it's definitely the oody woody kind of smell. In fact, the oud in this kind of reminds me of the oud and oud wood, but then you've got all this kind of like gourmandish syrupy kind of notes of the honey with the rose and of course, uh, Amber Vanilla Labanum. Anyway, Flores says Honey Oud at number nine. So this next fragrance is from the house of The Different Company, another brand I don't speak too much about, although I think this brand is kind of, uh, kind of in the background. Not many people talk about it, and I don't know why. There's some great fragrances there. This is Oud for Love, a fragrance created by Bertrand du Chaffoul. And it's actually quite good, but I ended up putting it here because it does get animalic on me. The oud is kind of animalic, but uh, it's a great combination of gourmand, vanillic, ambery notes with caramel, oud, amber, whiskey, cloves, castorium, tolu, balsam, saffron, cumin, immortel. Yeah, it's a great, great fragrance. I just think... Um, it could get a little challenging with the oud. It is kind of on the animalic side, but you've got all that kind of gourmandish notes uh, there, the boozy notes and the amber, the caramel, vanilla, and things like that. But uh, there's also the cumin. The cumin throws it off a little bit in addition to being a little animalic. And you've got this kind of like sweaty kind of a cumin smell in here. It's quite delicious, but I've ranked it here because I prefer the other ones just a little more than this. But I like its complexity, I like the smell altogether, and the fact that it does get a little animalic. Either way, the different companies Oud for Love. How many of you know this one and that house? 
do you like and enjoy the fragrances from that house? Let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Okay, the next fragrance I'm talking about is Atkinson's His Majesty the Oud. How many of you know this one? I've had this bottle for years, probably like two and a half, three years. I never speak about it. I haven't even used it. Go figure. I have so many fragrances that I will never use, right? Some of you comment about that. But this particular fragrance has kind of like a... Udi experience also in addition to that kind of a spicy tobacco-ish tobacco vani tobacco kind of an experience and that's why I've put it here and I enjoy this one because I kind of have this kind of tobacco vani kind of experience with lots of oody woody touches. But Atkinson's His Majesty the Oud features Laotian Oud, vanilla, sandalwood, black tea, cloves, cedar, leather and I think it's the cloves along with the vanilla and something else in here combined together which gives me this kind of um, tobacco vanilla kind of experience. It's quite yummy and when I was in London I bought a few fragrances there uh, from their boutique uh, which is uh, this it's really close to Raja Parfums uh, you know store there as well and I got a nice shave and they have really really great fragrances I just never speak about them uh, I, I like to discover a little more about this house and their fragrances but this is definitely doing it for me and I kind of like it because it kind of has that familiar smell that I like from tobacco vanille. Either way, this is Atkinson's His Majesty the Oud at number seven. At number six, going to the house of Wilhelm Parfumery, and I recently spoke about this house uh, a week or so ago. This is the Oud Affair, this one right here. This is really, really yummy, and this one also reminds me of tobacco vanille. In fact, this one reminds me more of tobacco vanille than the Atkinson's His Majesty the Oud does, and it's really, really delicious, but I think this to me has lots of tobacco with oud, black vanilla, honey, ginger butter, and the combination is really, really delicious. And to me, when you compare these two fragrances together, I get more of a gourmand touch with this one than this one for sure, uh, because that becomes more, you know, um, like it reminds me of the tobacco and the oud is a lot more amped up in this. This one I think is the oud is a little more calmer, and that's why it kind of acts a little more gourmand. And that ginger butter in here, that is a great kind of a note, you know? I like this kind of like, um, you know, not syrupy, but however butteriness it gets from butter contrasted with the ginger, uh, it's a great, great uh, combination, and it's a really, really delicious experience. All these fragrances are going to be perfect for war, um, you know, cold weather, winter, and this one actually has this coziness as well. I don't find a lot of the fragrances cozy unless it becomes really, really like in intensely gourmandish than I do, and this one definitely does have that gourmand touch. I think it's from that ginger butter and the vanilla in here. Of course the honey as well, and I think the honey vanilla combo in here is really really to die for. I think that's why the whole fragrance is really really delicious, but either way, number six, Wilhelm Parfumerie's The Oud Affair. But the next fragrance I'm really really obsessing over uh, because it's a very very creamy white chocolate combo with uh, you know, slightly animalic oud. This is at number five, Sarah Baker's Ludo. Brand new fragrance created by Chris Maurice. And I really, really enjoy this kind of like contrast of the oud. Uh, you know, the oud is actually reminding me of the oud in her other fragrance called Symmetry and then some. Like, there's that first initial reminder of the oud and symmetry. Then you have a little more of an, a different kind of oud. Then that white chocolate takes over and it becomes a completely different fragrance. But first smell, symmetry just completely reminds me of symmetry. And I think it's the fact that this particular one has Laotian oud, just like the Atkinson's uh, fragrance I just mentioned a couple of fragrances ago. Plus it has this Suyufi agar wood. And I think that's why I'm actually experiencing that initial reminder of symmetry then it moves on to reminding me of something a little different along with that white chocolate coming in and it becomes a complete different fragrance but the white chocolate is so so delicious in here very very creamy and I like it because it's like animalic oud and then delicious chocolate kind of like almost they don't want to mix together or you wouldn't think they would mix together but they really really do but this has all the ouds plus it has amber white chocolate cipriol vanilla orange blossom and musk and I don't want to forget the cipriol or the orange blossom because it adds this kind of unique layer 
prior to the fragrance. Cipriol, of course, it's got this kind of earthy, woody, lightly patchouli-esque kind of an experience with the woodiness. And then, of course, the uh, orange blossom, which the original fragrance that that reminds me of Symmetry had a lot of the citrusy touches. And this one definitely has it in here as well. Not as much as the other, but it kind of like, it kind of comes back to reminding me of that other fragrance. But really, really a great release from this house. It's become my favorite release from this house. This is Ludo from Sarah Baker Perfumes. Okay, this next one is going now. We're going to really gourmand fragrances, really becoming gourmand. This is actually more vanilla than oud, but it does have oud in it. This is Tiziana Terenzi's Dionisio. Do you know this one? Dionisio is a great fragrance and I think they do a different version each year. I have 2019 and I have plenty of it here. And it's a great spicy vanilla, lots of spice. Although there's no mention of spices, I'm getting a very, very spicy dry vanillic experience here. But it mentions that they use Madagascan vanilla and Tahitian vanilla in this. Plus it has ambergris, oud musk, jasmine, and lily of the valley. But it acts like a very spicy dry vanilla. There's some animalic qualities here and I think the combination of the ambergris with the oud creates a little bit of an animalic touch but there's so much vanilla in this you don't have to worry about the animalic experience i don't get too much of it but it does create it a little bit but then again you might be very sensitive to animalic notes and this might be overly animalic to you for me the 2019 version is amazing it's a great great fragrance very very delicious but just the thing about this particular fragrance as i keep saying dry it is dry so it doesn't act very syrupy to me and most of the time i want syrupiness from gourmand because that's kind of what i like about it so either way though very very delicious vanilla like oody fragrance tizina terenzi's dionisio i haven't tried the 2021 I love the 2019. I'm, I'm assuming they're very, very similar. Either way, check that out if you don't know it. I think it's a great, great fragrance. And with Tiziana Terenzi's fragrances, they all last a long, long time. And same thing with Sarah Baker's uh, Ludo. It's an extrait de parfum, just like the Tiziana Terenzi Dionisio. All right, next up, going to the house of Maison Francis Kirkchen. This is Oud Satin Mood. And the EDP concentration, I still do not have the extrait de parfum. But this is really, really delicious. But you know, to me, this is, a again, a rosy gourmand. Udi, Udi Rosy Gourmand. So this probably has become one of the more popular oud fragrances from Maison Francis Kirkjian. Uh, that's why they kind of canned uh, two of the other ouds and they left uh, this one. Uh, and I think it's a great fragrance, but it is definitely a rose gourmand and it also has lots of violet in the notes as well. So you've got this kind of vanillic, ambery, benzoiny, resinous touch contrasted with the oud and the rose and the violet note. It's not overly gourmand, but it's also a very, very delicious fragrance. I just want a little more gourmand, but I think it, it, it works perfectly as is. And I want to compare it to the x ray version because they do change. There are some differences, even though they're kind of the same fragrance. So I want to see if that one goes a little more gourmand. Let me know if it does for you guys. But in, the, in this case, this is a really, really delicious combination of rose, oud, vanilla, violets, and, uh, you know, a couple of other notes like ambery, resinous touches. Really, really great and very, very long lasting. I think the EDP is long lasting. I think the X-ray will be even uh, complete nuclear beast mode, but very, very delicious fragrance. If you like the rose and vanillic gourmand oudy fragrances, definitely check that one out. Oud Satin Mood from the house of uh, Maison Francis Kirkchen. Okay, the next two fragrances are full on oudy gourmands. You know, these are the ultimate in oudy gourmand fragrances, at least for me, because they kind of just smell a lot like gourmand notes. Number two, from the house of Raja Parfums, this is Sweetie Oud. And to me, this one is hardly oudy with oudiness there, but really, really a great gourmand experience. But it's not your typical gourmand because it smells like bread. Baked, buttery, smoky, steamy bread. That's what it smells like, and it's very, very delicious. This is probably one of my favorite fragrances. It's become a favorite fragrance from this house, and I think it's definitely a masterpiece, because like, I featured it in my Masterpiece Fragrances video. And it's a kind of a perfume trickery, I think, for this particular fragrance, because 
there's no like a bread note. There's no croissant or bakery, steamy, bready kind of notes in here. What it features is cardamom, oud, oak, patchouli, olibanum, rose, labdanum, guyac wood, artemisia, juniper, cumin, and cedar. A lot of stuff happening, but it really, really, really smells great. It smells like a very, very warm, baked croissant and when you kind of like open it up like cut it into half and there's steam coming and hitting your nose because there is a little bit of a steaminess here very very delicious again it's not overly oody just be warned if you like it overly oody or lots of oud this might not come off oody to you it's there it's light anyway raja parfum sweetie oud at number two and can you guess my number one my number one is going to the house of zerjoff this is 1717 Symphonium. And once again, we have an oudy fragrance, but not necessarily overly oudy because it's more gourmandy. But oud is there, and it's a very, very delicious fragrance. I actually reviewed this recently, and I also featured it in a Zerjoff Gourmand Fragrances video. I ranked it at number one because it's a great gourmand, and it's a great gourmand with oud. Um, it's basically the combination of chocolates, with oranges. Great combo, right? Uh, I've mentioned this in the last couple of videos. It reminds me of the very popular chocolate orange uh, mixed uh, drinks with like, you know, uh, kind of like a mocha with orange, laced with orange syrup. That's what it kind of reminds me of, minus the coffee though, because, uh, or, you know, those little orange uh, balls that you kind of put on, tap on the table and then it kind of opens up. That's the kind of experience it is, or basically like candied oranges dri dipped in dipped in or in, in chocolate and things like that. Yummy, yummy fragrance. Very, very delicious. Again, light on the oud if you're expecting oud in this one. Not too much, but it features Laotian oud and Thai oud, along with vanilla, Belgian chocolate, and Spanish mandarin. So delicious. Very, very long lasting. It's a pure perfume concentration. A little goes a long way, but yummy, yummy, yummy all the way. Anyway, this is Zerjoff's 1717 Symphonium, and that's my number one gourmand oud fragrance for you today. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances, and let me know if you know of other gourmand oud fragrances. Doesn't have to be overly gourmand, as long as it has vanilla. It could have other notes, but I'm sure there's a ton out there. I just don't own or am not aware of all of them. Let me know what they are. Also, let me know if you like these fragrances. Have you sampled them? And do you enjoy them for the fact that they have, you know, oud combined with vanilla or other gourmand notes? Put a comment down so I can find out. Either way, I appreciate you tuning in today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.